How is Sri Lanka's Tamil minority coping two years after the end of a devastating civil war? That story seems to have fallen off the international media's radar. The Sri Lankan government promised reconciliation after defeating Tamil rebels who had fought for nearly 30 years for an independent Tamil state. So today, we're examining whether Sri Lanka has been able to move beyond its painful past, or is it still caught up in the same divisions that triggered the conflict in the first place? Let's take a look at this video, which shows a little bit of the status of some people in, some Tamils in Sri Lanka right now. Now, many say that nothing has changed for these people. Refugees are still languishing in camps, and there's very little opportunity for Tamils in the Northeast, where they are, in fact, uh, a majority of the population. Not only are people in the uh, Tamil regions of Sri Lanka speaking about these issues, however, the Tamil diaspora is also getting involved. And we saw a very interesting music video that was produced by diaspora members, and this is one of many. Let's take a quick look. I also want to show you one other clip, and this is a very interesting one. This is from a controversial video that was done by Britain's Tan Channel 4, and it actually talks about some of the atrocities that have been happening in the region. The film is called Sri Lanka's Killing Fields. Now, uh, some of the footage is very graphic. We're not going to show you much, but just to give you a little bit of an insight into what's happening. But government forces were not the only ones showing a brutal disregard for civilians. Now, what the narrator is speaking about the here is the fact that there have been allegations of war crimes committed by both the Sri Lankan government and by Tamil rebel fighters. Uh, the Sri Lankan government has actually questioned the authenticity of the footage in this particular piece. Joining us now via Skype to discuss these matters further is blogger Indy Samarajiva, who lives in Colombo. He writes for the Sri Lankan newspaper, The Sunday Leader, and has founded a blogging community of around 1,200 members. Also joining us now from London is Sri Lankan Tamil blogger and activist Kumaravid Kumara Vadivel Guruparan, who grew up in Jaffna. He lost several members of his family in Sri Lanka's civil war. Good to have you both in the stream. Indy, let's actually begin with you. What is the status of reconciliation with Tamils in Sri Lanka now? Well, I think you've you framed the debate in terms of Tamils and Sinhalese, but I think it's really about Sri Lankans. Um, there are Sri Lankans of all stripes that have issues. We have Muslims, we have rich and poor, and there are these divisions as well. So the question is, how do we reconcile as Sri Lankans? Now, I think post-war, we're moving beyond the whole Tamil Sinhala division and the whole, like, are you blowing us up, are you blowing us up division? And we're saying, okay, how is our education system working? Are our kids functioning in school? How is health? We have, like, Sri Lankan issues. So I think it comes from the outside media that you're asking, like, are Tamils and Sinhalese being reconciled? But we have other divisions as well. And we have other things that unite us. And I do think we're moving beyond that simply because we don't have constant terrorism. Let me ask you then, Guru, would you agree with that characterization? I think we have to be very careful about asserting something uh, that, that, uh, that doesn't attach to the type of real situation that the Tamils and the minority and the other minorities that are facing back in Sri Lanka. I, I think it's first it's wrong to be jingoistic about a Sri Lankan identity which actually does not accommodate its minorities. The question is whether the Tamils feel that they are being included as Sri Lankans and that's what the conflict is about. To talk about other divisions as India did is right. I mean, I mean, it's right to point out that there are other divisions, but there is no one who denies, and it's surprising that India would claim this, that there is, there was a very serious, there is a very serious ethnic conflict in Sri Lanka. Of course, the hostilities dimension of it, uh, the fact that there were two warring parties, uh, that dimension is over. But the the reasons for the conflict, the fundamentals of the conflict, remain very much the same. And 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 uh, two years after the war is over. Uh, none of these dynamics have changed. So, so talking about education, there are specific issues that Tamils in Sri Lanka face as Tamils uh, uh, relating to education. Uh, you take the economy. Uh, uh, there are issues that Tamils face in Sri Lanka because they are Tamils, because they are targeted as uh, ta Tamils in Sri Lanka. So there is an ethnic dimension to the different problems 
uh, that Indy himself identifies. And I let, think let me give Indy an opportunity to respond to that. Indy, uh, is Guru correct in this? I think Tamil people definitely have issues. Now, my question is how do we solve those issues? And I'm saying we solve them by making it a Sri Lankan issue. Because if you say it's a Tamil issue, then really, like, what stake do I have in that? What stake do Muslims have in that? What stake do other people have in that? We say, okay, it's a Sri Lankan issue. We want equality for Sri Lankans. Then suddenly it's something everybody can participate in and everyone can do together. Because post-war, we've discovered that we all have issues. We have, like, traffic issues, right? We have, like, job issues. So these are things which unite us. And if we're together, we can do them together. So I have a question for both of you. Um, my name is Ramesh Srinivasan. Um, I'm actually of Tamil descent, but I'm, I'm Indian of Tamil descent. Um, the Tamil uses, the Tamil diasporic uses, diaspora immigrants all over the world, their uses of social media were considered critical to sort of fueling some of the Tamil agenda, both back in the day, dating back 10 to 15 years, as well as currently. Um, so do you both have ideas or thoughts on whether the Tamil diaspora and its continued use of social media is a productive part of this you know, reconciliation process in Sri Lanka. Guru? Either of you want to jump in? Yeah, I mean, the, I, I'll answer that question in a more uh, general, general terms. The, the, the fact that uh, the Tamil diaspora is an organized force, uh, that it, it takes part actively in the debates uh, relating to what happens in Sri Lanka and generally with regard to uh, the Tamil plight, uh, is 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 uh, is needed. Uh, that's an activism that we can't deny them of. But the point here is that whatever activism that the Tamil diaspora is involved in should not be the reason why you deny the existence of a problem uh, of, of problems that Tamil space back home. I think that, that that's important too. I mean, one of the things that the Sri Lankan government uh, and and people in the south have uh, particularly become tuned to do is to say that the Tamil diaspora just because the Tamil diaspora has has invested itself in a cause, tries to link the Tamil diaspora into into that cause, and and tries to and because of certain sort of uh, pathologies that the Tamil diaspora has been uh, associated with, uh, try to uh, delegitimize the whole issue. I think there are problems with the way the Tamil diaspora conducts itself. That's that's something uh, for another debate. But the question is, are there issues in Sri Lanka that Tamils face as Tamils? And I think what Indy just said in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in his response to my earlier response is is deeply problematic because Kashmiris, for example, would assert that they are facing issues because they are Kashmiris. And Kashmiris will have a problem to say that it won't be a response to say that what the problem that Kashmiris face is because they face them as Indians. You would say the same for the Scottish. You would say the same for the Quebecians. You would say the same for the Catalanians. Let, so, let's, give India, uh, let's give India an opportunity to respond. Indy, is it easy to say that these are Sri Lankan issues and not Tamil issues if you yourself are not Tamil? It seems it's frozen. Well, I'm not a very good Sinhalese, if that makes you feel any better. I barely speak Sinhala. Um, is it fair? I don't know. I'm, we could talk about the problem. Okay, like, let's say in social media. This guy, at Tamil Diaspora on Twitter, I follow him, but he talks about the problem all the time. So it's like war, 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 war crimes, whatever. But then I saw some kids from the Mosaic Institute in Canada, and they were talking about, like, well, we have this problem, but what's the solution? And for me, the solution is unity, is working together as Sri Lankans to solve Tamil problems, gender issues, you know, together. Because you need a broad base to solve these problems. So I understand the problem. I'm not denying it's not there. I'm saying, how do we work it out? And I'm saying together. Indy, you mentioned uh, Tamil diaspora, the particular user on Twitter. Well, we have a tweet that he just tweeted in to our show saying, recently Lanka and Tamil lawmakers were severely beaten up by troops. And he's linking to an AFP article right here. Um, I just wanted to ask a question to you or to, to Guru, actually. Let's just put it to you. Mike here is also saying to the Tamil diaspora doesn't donate a single dollar for the welfare of the Tamils in Sri Lanka. So social media aside, is there a divide between Tamils in Sri Lanka and the diaspora? I think this dichotomy is overplayed. Uh, 
I, let me just respond to what you just said about the diaspora not contributing back home. You look at the the, the development, so-called developmental works that are happening in the north and east. I come from Jaffna in Sri Lanka, and I am a, I recently came to the UK. I only came in September 2010, so I very much define myself as a local Tamil. If you look at the developmental activities, the so-called developmental activities that are taking place in the north and east, they are taking place under a structure of fear and intimidation, where there is extreme control from the center by uh, the government in Kalambo in terms of any anything that happens in the north and east. So unless you subscribe to the government's view of how you approach the question of economic development, how you approach the question of a political solution, it is it is impossible for Tamils living in the diaspora to work with. Them. So the only way that the Tamil diaspora uh, diaspora can work in Sri Lanka is to sign up to the government's agenda, and this is for asking. Is this asking for something that is morally and politically impossible? Uh, so, so that's, let, that's let, the issue. That, let that we let me get Indy to respond to this. So, Indy, the government made some significant promises in the wake of the war. Has it delivered? Are Tamils being treated equally or are they facing prejudices still to this day, in your opinion? Okay, we've lost Indy for just a minute, but yeah. I want to bring this back to you uh, quickly, Ramesh, because the issue at hand, they've both got strong views, but yeah. uh, the question is what's happening on the ground and do the Tamils have equal opportunity in the United sure. Nations? So what's happening here, and there, there's actually a shared space between what both of them are saying, which could be really productive to focus on. On the one hand, there's this point that the Tamil diaspora is kind of keeping the movement honest in a way, even after the end of the civil war, so-called end of the civil war. So that's actually fueling this kind of global attention, even though it's not being covered much by mainstream media. However, the point that Indy is making is really important, which is that this is a place-based, this is a locally-based issue, right? This is, these are issues related to a particular country with a particular nation with a particular history and a particular economy. So to, to sort of think that all of this is about diaspora ignores the fact that these people are all on some level Sri mm -hmm. Lankans. But so how do we work across those things? We that's have, the key. We have a tweet coming in that's kind of taking a broader look at this from Lenguara saying this compulsion in pointing out ethnic differences in any issue but in this one particularly is always a distraction from the more vital issues. Mm. Do you think it's important to point out the ethnic differences? See, it, it's, it's only important insofar as that a lot of the sort of energy into the movement is happening through these sort of social media. But the ethnic mm. differences are legitimate. I mean, they were the source of a lot of these tensions and problems, right? right. And, and they were about, you know, they were about, they were related to class and they were related to education levels. And there were waves of refugees coming out of Sri Lanka in, in, who, were, who were poorer uh, refugees who had to deal with many of these Well, well let me bring right this on. back to Guru, actually, on the same point. Guru, how do you think the, Tamil, the Sri Lankan government has done so far in reintegrating Tamils into the country? And what could it do better? That's a, yeah, that's a huge question. Uh, uh, but let me quickly respond to what just uh, Ramesh said. I mean, I, I, I do think, I mean, to talk about uh, the Tamils as Sri Lankans is important, I agree. But the question is that the Sri Lankan identity does not accommodate the Tamils. Now, what, does, what needs to be done about it? What needs to be done is the Tamils since independence have been asking for the state structure to be reformed so that uh, power is shared by the by, by the constituent communities of Sri Lanka together. That this is not just an exercise where the Sinhalese from Colombo control state power, but state power is shared. I mean that that really is the issue. And on this, there is quite quite a consensus that the government has made very as very little progress or no progress at all. Now on the question of rehabilitation and reconciliation, let me just give you a, a few figures now. From uh, uh, from uh, Kukulai to Chundikulam, which is in Mullathiva district, where the last uh, phase of the war took place, there has been very uh, the fishing restrictions still apply. Where a single is from the south are allowed to come and uh, engage in fish and prawn uh, uh, farming. Uh, for example, in Vaunathiva, in Batiklo, for example, 3,000 acres of land belonging to Tamils have been given over to uh, Sinhalese home guards to engage in cultivation. Similarly, 1,300 uh, acres of land in Kulinochi, uh, in Kanagara and Kulam, these are all in Kulinochi district, has been given over, uh, uh, have been, uh, ha is, is being militarized. I mean, there, is, there, is, there are major concerns relating to uh, national security-led uh, uh, settlement. Guru, uh, unfortunately, yes. we've run out of time in this yes. segment, but you've given us a lot of food for thought. I'm going to direct people to know they can find out more information about this on our website, but first I want to thank you for joining us and giving this insight. Thanks.
Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, as I mentioned, you can go to our website, stream.aljazeera.com, where you're going to find the videos that we showed here, in addition to links to a number of other stories, including this one about post-war Sri Lanka. You can learn more about how both the Sinhalese and the Tamils are struggling to overcome a legacy of war and ethnic division.